Hey guys, how are we doing? I'm here in the Lake District National Park and I am sat in my Hilleberg Nalo 2 tent. So I have owned this tent for about a year and a half now and I just wanted to make a kind of follow-up review of my review <laughs> about how I'm getting on with this tent. Now I tend to use it as a kind of base camp setup. So like I've been doing here in the Lake District this week, I kind of pitch one tent and then I'll shoot out in my car and I'll do various day walks or occasionally a wild camp with my smaller Hilleberg Acto tent, which is a single person tent. But I always come back to this. And I thought what I'd do is I'd just run through kind of my experience, like how I'm getting on with this tent. What are the pros? What are the cons? And sort of leave you to make your own conclusion. Now, if you want the full in-depth review, just check out the link below. I'm not going to cover all of the features today. It's going to kind of be a dip in, dip out sort of video, hoping to keep it nice and brief. So let's get started. And where we're going to start is on the outside of the tent. Okay, so this green outer fly is made of Kerolon 12,000 fabric. Kind of a fancy name and basically this is super lightweight stuff that's really strong and durable helping to keep the actual pack weight down to just 2.4 kilograms for this two person tent it's made of three layers of silicon which is about as <laughs> as good as you can get hence probably the pretty hefty price tag of this tent of a retail price at about 860 pounds ouch you can always get it cheaper somewhere else so definitely make sure you're kind of keeping your eye open for deals Basically, it comes in this green color, it comes in red, or it comes in sand. I like the green, it's quite discreet. And what we can see is this fabric comes right the way down to the ground. And what that means is it just helps prevent, in my experience, the wind from getting in, although that does have the cons when it comes to condensation as the wind helps to keep things circulating. So you get more condensation buildup. And that's actually one of my biggest issues with this tent is the amount of condensation you get on a still day like today but it also means that you don't get the splashback of the rain. And when it snows, it's actually an added bonus because it tends to layer up around the edges here. And then it's kind of extra insulation, which is ideal. So its shape is maintained by two nine millimeter feather light poles. So we've got one here at the back and then there's one at the front, which is the bigger one. And basically these are the structure formation. <laughs> The sleeves that actually hold the poles, there's optional space for two sets of poles just to add some real strength there. You can buy the extra poles from Hilleberg, which is ideal, or just get some somewhere else that are cheaper. That will fit. <laughs> um, and then the pegs that actually hold the outer down are these kind of characteristic Hilleberg pegs. They're gold, they're V-shaped, and again, they're just really lightweight and durable, so you can shove those in the ground. They're going to really hold the tent down, making sure you've got them in at a nice 45 degree angle. Um, they're just really reliable pegs. <laughs> so the guy lines themselves, I actually really like these. I like the kind of clips that adjust the length. They lock in place really easy. They're very easy to use with gloves. You just grab and pull. Although trying to untangle them when you have colder hands is a little bit more challenging. But again, Hilleberg have worked really hard to keep everything super lightweight. And by pulling these tight, you're helping to keep your whole tent nice and taut. Just on the back end of the tent then we've got this little ventilation port you don't have to peg this down so you can leave it kind of open and basically this is the the back end of the tent or you can zip it shut like so i've pegged that really tight so because i pegged it open and basically what i'm trying to do is just really maximize airflow and reduce condensation but it's quite nice to have that vent there on the back which you can do whatever you want with you can also roll these up as you can see, there's little clips here, so you can just get them completely out of the way if that's more your kind of thing. So you can get that constant airflow. We've had a glorious week here <laughs> this week in the Lake District. I'm pretty sunburnt, really caught the sun, but uh, this is the perfect kind of weather where I could roll this up and ro not have to worry about it at all. Back to the front of the tent then, I'm sitting in the kind of main porch area. Now this is massive in terms of porches as it goes for two person tents. I mean, I could fit very comfortably in here. Someone else could fit in here as well. And basically I do all my cooking. I store a lot of things in here. When it gets wet, I change waterproofs and stuff in here. And I like the fact that it's big enough for me to be able to move around. And definitely if there's two of you, you can move around as well. The actual door itself then, I've held back with a clip, but I could also clip it on this side. It's really great that that's kind of attached. And there's four zips that make up this door, which is really quite great because it gives you various options for kind of ventilation. In the night, I tend to leave the top half open. What that means is again, aiding that airflow. But during the day, I tend to just roll it all the way back. It's not that I'm here in the day, but the afternoon like this where I finish my mountain climbs, <laughs> just roll it back. And again, that's just gonna help airflow. But the four different options, it's just really helpful 
to help you get that airflow and maximize kind of light into the tent as well. Okay, things are getting a little bit exciting now. What we can see here then is the pinning of the inner to the outer. Now I've learned to absolutely love this. It's so quick and easy. Basically, you've got a little loop on the outer and the inner is just a little stick thing and you put the stick thing through the loop and that's it. It's all held in place. So you can put the outer up first and then the inner and that just means you can keep everything dry. And the same in the reverse, you can take down the inner and then take down the outer or you could just use the outer completely so it's kind of a tarp. This then is the inside. What we've got is two sleeping mats. So we've got this one here, Thermarest Venture. This one here, Thermarest Venture. That's the old model. This is the new one. That one deflates far too much. Very unhappy about that. <laughs> then I've got my sleeping bag, which is in a Alp kit bivvy. And you can just see how everything kind of fits together. Now you could have your stuff here, which I've got on my right hand side. I could have that sort of stored down the middle. But actually, just because it's just me, I've kind of made this into like a double bed bit. And I have various stuff stored right down the bottom there as well, which is ideal. In fact, there's probably like six dry bags worth of stuff down there, as well as a pillow. And what we can also see is this ventilation spot, which is which kind of leads to the back end, which we looked at earlier. And again, we're just aiding that airflow. I keep that open pretty much all the time. On the top, there's a piece of string. Now, I've hung a light, but you could also hang things like stinky socks maybe wet washing, whatever it is you want. It's kind of a really great strap to have, actually. You can tension it or let it go loose as much as you want to. It's just kind of quite helpful to hang things from, like, a light. So on either side of the entrance, there's these two pockets that are really sizable. This one, apparently, I've stored feathers. And this one over here, I've got some sunglasses and maps. They're really helpful to have just to keep things like keys, phones, whatever it is that you want in. Um, you can access those in the night, you can keep head torches in there. They're just a great space to ensure stuff doesn't get lost amongst everything else. What we've got here then is the bathtub design. So this is kind of the black piece of fabric that follows all the way around the edge of the tent. And basically this means if you get any groundwater collecting, you're going to stay dry because it's just protecting it from kind of percolating through this golden fabric that makes up the inner. This stuff is far more durable, far more robust, and it's going to keep the water out and stop you floating away on your roll mat. Just to show you the door when it's zipped up, so basically on the bottom there you've got the kind of actual fabric that's rolled down and then you've got the mesh that you can have. So you can have the mesh for ventilation or you can have it open or you can have the fabric up as well so you can get that bit of privacy. I tend to always have that rolled down. I love the fact that there's the option. It means I can get more light in. I can feel kind of like I'm outside even though I'm inside and it just keeps the mosquitoes and things out as well. Back in the porch, just showing you all my kind of clobber that I've, I'm able to store in this space. It's such a good space. I've got kind of all my cooking stuff here on the right. I've got my Osprey Talon over there, which is a 33 backpack. Some maps over here. I've got some boots, some shoes, some flip-flops, and a bag of food. And most importantly, coffee. <laughs> but just to show you how much stuff you really can store in here, that is just one person's trash, but you could easily pile up some backpacks in there. You could tidy this all up to get more boots in. The space is just endless. I really love the fact that this tent just has so much space and options for space. To be honest, guys, that is pretty much it. I just wanted to give you kind of a roundabout tour of the tent to show it in use and to comfort you in the fact that I very much do get on with this tent and I've owned it for a while and I use it a lot. I do like this tent. <laughs> so just to summarize then the cons are the fact that it's very much pricey, but also condensation. I struggle with it a lot, regardless of how or where I pitch or how much I ventilate it, I still struggle with condensation. So I'm kind of just either accepting the fact that I'm a heavy breather <laughs> or the fact that it's something to do with the fact it's a tunnel design and therefore more prone to condensation. So I've tried to adapt how I use the tent to reduce stuff getting wet, but condensation is definitely an issue with this tent. Now the pros, they far outweigh the cons. So the first pro is the space. There's so much space, whether I'm on my own or whether there's the two of us, there's plenty of space for both backpacks, for both sets of boots and flip-flops and sleeping bags and sleeping mats. You know, there is plenty of space to make it feel like we're not sleeping on top of each other, which is totally ideal. <laughs> Um, with regards to weight, 2.4 kilograms, if you're splitting that between two people, that's, that's nothing. Like, you carry more weight in water than that. And water is very important, but so is shelter. But 2.4 kilograms is, is amazing. And, you know, I love how reliable this tent is in crazy weather. <laughs> I've sat in some serious storms and, 
and snow and everything in this tent and I felt safe and feeling safe in your shelter is so important for your mental state. So if you want a reliable tent, this is definitely a reliable tent. And all the other pros are just everything we kind of talked about, the this, this space, the storage, the, the feel. It's a good tent. I like it. But guys, if you'd like more information, please do check out my other actual kind of in-depth review, which is far more focused than this one, which actually goes into the, the stats and figures of the tent to help you understand what makes it the Hilleberg Nalo and stand out from other tents of a similar design. Um, so check that one out, it's all in the link below. And if you have this tent and you've used it, you've got pros, you've got cons, you've got your own comments, please leave them below. Share that information so we can help each other out. Everyone feed, feeding back and, and helping each other figure stuff out. It's a crazy minefield of information out there. So the more we can get here in an isolated space, the better and more useful it can be. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, enjoy your adventures and stay wild.